Hey everyone, before I get started, I'd like to thank everyone for listening last time, and if I could impose a little further, I'd like to ask that if you like the show, or even if you didn't, I guess, maybe you could stop and give me a positive review on iTunes. I have to admit something kind of embarrassing. I decided to try to get the ball started on my own, so I went to leave myself a review, and usually when I leave reviews for things on iTunes, you know, it's kind of semi-anonymous. You can only see a username. But no, it says Phil Albertelli. So the only reviewer there right now is from yours truly. Uh, luckily, it wasn't too grandiose. Um, but I have to admit it, it dawned on me that I probably shouldn't be um, guilting you guys too much about the reviews. Because there's a ton of podcasts that I love that I listen to on just about a daily basis. Adam Carolla... The Young Turks, Attack of the Show, Majority Report, a bunch of others. And not once have I ever stopped and given any of them a positive re review. So maybe I should learn a lesson from this. But anyway, here we go with episode two. Hi, I'm Philip Anthony Albertelli. And welcome to the second episode of The Week in Doubt, a podcast for atheists, agnostics, and whoever. The subject of this episode is going to be the question, is it all right to criticize someone's faith? Before I dig in, I did want to cover one small news story. There was a public policy polling poll, that sounded a little funny, um, taken ahead of the recent GOP primaries in Alabama and Mississippi, and uh, one of the statistics that was discovered during the poll was that 60% of the people polled uh, claimed that they did not believe in evolution. Um, that's kind of startling, e even though this wasn't nationwide. It was, it was just one small poll. Uh, still, 60%. And like I covered briefly in the inaugural episode, uh, even though it's called the theory of evolution, I think most sensible people, certainly scientists, uh, consider it to be a fact. As I said, you, we have the evidence. We have the fossil record. Uh, we have the DNA evidence, the modern genetic science that allows us to see how species are related to other species. Uh, so that's kind of disheartening. Um, but if it means anything, during the, the same poll, it was also reported that 45% of the same people polled believe that Barack Obama is Muslim. What that says about society or the ability of science to saturate the masses, um, I don't know. I'll let you decide. But it's certainly uh, somewhat comedic and somewhat disturbing food for thought. So, on to the main subject. Is it all right to criticize someone's faith? I think that what really spurred me to want to cover this topic is, uh, it was back a little while ago, uh, I'm a bit of a political junkie, even though I have to admit that politics is still much a greater enigma to me than um, religion. But this is back when John Huntsman was still in the race. Um, so at the time, we had two Mormon GOP candidates. We had Huntsman, and of course, we had Mitt Romney. And um, a popular Christian leader at the time had come forward and said that he believed Mormonism was a cult. The person in question was a Rick Perry supporter, a pastor by the name of Robert Jeffress, or Jeffers, J-E-F-F-R-E-S-S. -E -F -F -E -S -S. Jeffers kind of sounds like a preppy nickname for someone named Jeffrey. But anyway, those of you who follow politics probably already know that Rick Perry is another name, along with John Huntsman, who's no longer in the race for the GOP presidential candidacy. So that comment about Mormonism being a cult was made back in October. There was a pretty big backlash from the left and the right. Uh, pretty much a general consensus that was saying that criticizing someone's faith was somehow crude or mean-spirited and that it should be off-limits. 
I think even John Huntsman himself kind of dismissively in passing referred to the um, the person who had made the initial statement as, as an idiot, I believe. And so what is my answer to the question, is it all right to criticize someone's faith? Well, I believe it's yes and no. And uh, how's that for straddling the fence? And that might sound wishy-washy, but I think I have a pretty strong explanation. I believe on the one hand that no matter what your religious beliefs are, you should always at least try to purport yourself with a certain um, measure of human decency and respect and decorum. And I think if, if you saw a little old lady walking home from church with her Bible tucked under her arm or overheard people at a dinner party talking about how much uh, they love the Lord, I don't think um, your first course of action should be the tear into those people and try to rob them of their beliefs. Uh, I think probably quite the opposite. You should be tolerant, maybe even try to find common ground. Um, I suppose if the only time I would think, you know, in your private life is I should maybe take the gloves off and, and really criticize someone's beliefs is if they were to be the aggressor and and tell you something like you're going to spend eternity in perdition because you don't believe in their particular God. Even then, it's um, up to you whether or not you'd want to take the higher ground. I'm not sure how magnanimous I would be. But I have a much different opinion when it comes to the public forum of ideas. I think whether it's a academic debate or whether it's some kind of media platform whether it be a podcast or TV, etc., I think that's the time when the gloves really need to come off. And I think it's because that uh, as human beings, I think we have a duty to ourselves and to society to try to promote the truth. And if we're ever going to advance and get closer to answering those big questions about life, where did it all come from? Why are we here? It's the nature of existence. Um, I think we can't be timid and we can't be afraid to do our best to sort out superstition from science. Um, and we can't be worried about stepping on people's toes. I'm trying to think of an analogy, and it might be flawed, but let's say you had some kind of offbeat scientist who still believed that the Earth was the center of the universe or that everything revolved around the Earth. Um, we might feel somewhat sorry for him that um, he was under the spell of such a deluded belief, but we would probably feel that the right thing to do would be to um, disabuse him of those um, erroneous beliefs and make sure that the facts got to the masses and that the facts won the day. I'm not out to hurt anyone's feelings, but I think there probably is a fair amount you could justly criticize Mormonism for. Um, one thing that I often like to say is that it's hard enough for me to believe in belief systems that have been around for thousands of years, never mind relatively new ones that hold some rather outlandish ideas. And I think um, I, I kind of put Mormonism and Scientology together in that grouping. With Mormonism, we have the founder, um, Joseph Smith, a man of the 19th century, he had somewhat of a reputation as being a con man who basically founded a new form of Christianity. Um, there's this belief that an angel named Moroni, I believe it is, it sounds a little bit like a pasta product, I think, uh, <laughs> revealed himself to Joseph Smith. And there were um, golden plates that were supposed to be inscribed with some kind of uh, language. I think he referred to as Reformed Egyptian, with which uh, archaeologists are quick to admit is not an actual language. And there's his belief that 
the Native Americans are actually an ancient Hebrew tribe that migrated to the New World about 600 uh, years before the birth of Christ, and that shortly after his resurrection, Jesus revealed himself in the Americas. I think what offends me the most about that is as someone who has a reverence for um, Native American peoples and their unique culture and history, I find it somewhat offensive that someone would try to rewrite their history or impose their own made-up spiritual beliefs on top of the, um, the unique beliefs that the Native peoples already had. And there's also a whole strange cosmology uh, in Mormonism, um, their own beliefs about the spiritual world, the afterlife that aren't to be found in conventional Christianity. In the case of Scientology, which is, a, which is pretty strange as well, we basically have a 20th century science fiction writer creating his own belief system and how it gained such a hold over so many, um, that still baffles me and I have no idea. And there are some very bizarre um, spiritual beliefs, almost its own mythology um, that's contained within Scientology that I think even sci Scientologists are a little embarrassed of and that they keep close to the vest. Um, there's a whole story about Xenu, some kind of intergalactic uh, warlord, and stories about souls trapped on Earth and detonating bombs, really kind of uh, garish, um, B-grade uh, sci-fi stuff. My goal here is definitely not to hurt anyone. In fact, my biggest fear as I'm recording this is that someone listening will either be um, Mormon or, or will be a Scientologist or have relatives that are and will be offended by what I'm saying. But hopefully it will come across that the last thing I want is to hurt anyone. And what I'm trying to do here is separate fact from fiction and that's what I was relating to earlier when I was talking about how I think we have a, a duty as a, as a species, as a people to try and make sure that truth prevails and not just some airy idealistic higher truth, whatever that means but actual empirical scientific truth. As to the question is Mormonism a cult? I don't know. I, I think, first of all, it depends on what your definition of a cult is. On the one hand, I think people think of a cult as any kind of religious movement that maybe exerts undue influence or force over its uh, followers that make makes it tough to leave the religion or that employs some kind of brainwashing. Um, I think one of the other definitions of a cult is a small kind of radical religious movement, something new. And in that case, I suppose any religion in its infancy can be considered a cult. Um, it's usually a small movement that develops around a charismatic figure and then grows. If you think about Christianity, for example, um, it, Christianity is essentially a, a Jewish religion. We have Jesus, a first century Jew. His Jewish name would have been Yeshua, who is this charismatic religious figure. And from what we can discern from the Gospels and history, a devout Jew. Uh, and then um, he gains a following, and that following grows and spreads. And we also have something similar happening in the cases of Buddhism and Islam. In Buddhism, roughly 500 years before the birth of Christ, we have um, the Prince Siddhartha. Um, he basically would have been, he would have grown up in the Hindu religion, but he breaks away in his search for enlightenment and um, he develops his own following. And 
in the case of Islam, we have, uh, of course, the figure of Muhammad and a, a following that um, sprouts up around him as well. And I think in some cases, Mormonism can fit that kind of darker definition of a cult as a, a movement that can be dangerous for its own adherence. In the worst cases, think of um, cases in Mormonism of polygamy and child brides. And the whole idea of polygamy in, a, in and of itself doesn't really bother me, um, I suppose, if people want to marry however many other people. But it's when you have the imbalance of power, um, when you have the kind of collecting of underage brides and holding people as kind of psychological prisoners, maybe even physically as prisoners. Um, I think it was recently in the news, you, you, most of you have probably heard of Warren Jeffs, who was a Mormon leader. Um, kind of under his rule, uh, the, the taking of child brides, uh, the marrying off of children to old men, uh, polygamy in the, the worst um, manifestation possible is pretty much rife. And I'm in no way trying to say that's what Mormonism as a whole is like. Um, I imagine most cases Mormons are just like any other religious group in America. Um, they're well assimilated um, into the culture at large but they just have um, some supernatural religious views that when you scrutinize them rationally, um, looking at them objectively as if seen them for the first time, a little strange. I know I've been beating up on particular religions for a bit, so I want to pause for a minute and stress that Although I may have strong opinions about religion, I don't believe in being snobbish, and I would never let a person's religion keep me from being friends with them. Furthermore, as long as a person wasn't a fundamentalist and believed in the separation of church and state, I wouldn't let their religion keep me from giving them my political vote either. In concluding, I just want to reiterate, as harsh as it sounds, that there is definitely a time and place to criticize religion. It goes without saying that, as I said before, in our personal lives, we should try to be civil and courteous. But I find it disturbing, this idea that as long as it falls under the umbrella of religion, that we can't criticize or counter-argue against um, an erroneous notion or belief. If we're going to continue advancing knowledge, then we can't be afraid to test one another's beliefs, including religious beliefs. If you really want to see the sparks fly, um, I would suggest going on YouTube and just doing a search for Hitchens debate or Dawkins debate, and you'll see some great atheists speakers and uh, as well as theist speakers going head to head and it'll probably stimulate your intellect and give you some food for thought and might even learn something so all right oh and also if you're listening to this um, the same day it's being uploaded then you'll know it's March 16th and tomorrow St. Patrick's Day and like I said although I don't believe still love the holidays so happy st patty's day all right see you next time